Here, every team is champion. There is no second team, third team. I want to see how far I can go. Todo jogador quer representar seu país lá fora. Então comigo não é diferente. E isso é uma motivação enorme. Como eu disse, é tipo, basicamente para isso que eu jogo. Eu acho que é um campeonato de mundo que é bom para o World Champion. Eu acho que é um campeonato de mundo que é bom para o World Champion. Eu acho que é um campeonato de mundo que é bom para o World Champion. Eu acho que é um campeonato de mundo que é bom para o World Champion. La percepción que algunas personas tienen que somos el peor, la vamos a quemar de, de acuerdo a cómo juguemos este torneo. Pero si... Personally, for me, I feel like MSI 2018 is more of a redemption story because I really want to make up for last year's MSI. There is little margin for error in this tournament. Being a four-team group and only one team makes it through, definitely every match matters a lot. Just one match and, and that's it. 今回はあの前回の MSI と同じ地域のステージなあのグループステージなんで、あのそこでまた僕らが今度はリベンジする形で、あの結果がそういうことができるのがすごく楽しみですね。2018 Mid-Season Invitational. 14 regions from all over the world have sent their champions to fight for the title, and we are kicking off the action this week with the play-in stage live from Berlin. I'm Ify Shog supporter, bringing you the hype alongside Andrew Vedias Day and Berento Raz Mohamed. Fantastic to have you both here. Are we ready for the play-in? Yes, it's going to be a very exciting tournament. Only the top team from each group will get through, so a lot of competition is going to happen. And you know what? The road just don't stop for me from coming from Chengdu, flying all the way over, learning all the teams here today. I know it's going to be a great fun with you guys. It will be. You also have a fantastic suit on. I have to say, did you come here and did you think, well, you know what? I, I'm going to have to one-up whoever's next to me. So <laughs> I'm just going to pull out the great suit from day one. Oh, yeah, 100%. I knew I was next to Vettius and the war is going to start re here today. <laughs> fantastic. You both look amazing and we have some fantastic action coming up. The playing stage features 10 champions fighting to lock their spots in the group stage. Now, before we break down the nitty-gritty of all the teams, let's remind everyone of the format here at MSI 2018. Hey guys, it's Rivington III here with your guide to the 2018 Mid-Season Invitational. This year, 14 teams will compete in up to three different stages of MSI. The Play-In, Group Stage, and Knockout Stage. First up is the Play-In, where from May 3rd to the 9th, 10 teams will compete in Berlin for the two remaining spots in the MSI Group Stage. Eight of those 10 teams are drawn into two groups, which is based on their historic international performance and competitive strength. For more information on how we decide on seating for MSI, check out the corresponding article available at lolesports.com. But for now, let's get into the pools from which the groups will be drawn. Pool 1 is Turkey, Brazil, the CIS or Commonwealth of Independent States, and Latin America North. Pool 2 is Southeast Asia, Japan, Oceania, and Latin America South. These teams will compete in a best of one double round robin with the winners of each group then being seated against the representatives from Vietnam or the LMS. The winners of these best of fives will progress to the group stage. The group stage kicks off on the 11th of May, also in Berlin, where the two play-in teams join the representatives from Europe, North America, China, and Korea to see which regions will win the first international tournament of 2018. Which regions will come out on top? Find out as the play-in action starts on May 3rd at 1 p.m. Central European Summertime. 
Well, fantastic breakdown by Riv, and we'll get to see eight teams in action over the next two days. And as said in the opening video, these are the best of the best. There are no number twos. These are champions across the board. So I want to know from you guys, if we look at all the teams we'll see in the next two days, is there one or, or two teams that really jump out to you as absolute favorites? For me, 100% super massive. Within their own region, they came out with the usual Fab Fabulous, Dommage. There were a lot of well-known names, but then they added GBM, Snowfowler in particular. Their bottom lane looks to be incredibly strong. So is this a clear-cut story for you guys? Group B, Supermassive, is the strongest? Yeah, for me, it's looking like that. And for Group A, I feel like it's a similar story with Rainbow Seven. This team has been dominant, not only domestically for the longest time, but also in the playing stages. They've always topped their group, and I expect it to be the same this year. We'll see who comes out on top, because at the end of the play-in group stage, the winner of each group will then move on to face either Evos from the VCS or the Flash Rules from the LMS in a best of five in the eventual play-in knockout stage. And the winner of that will go on to the MSI group stage. Important note that that Evos coming from the VCS is now the Vietnam representative. They actually beat out the Gigabyte Marines to get here, so congratulations to them. Yeah, yeah they no. certainly did. They looked very, very good, and I'm excited to see what they can bring, because Vietnam as a region always tends to surprise when it comes to these international. Exactly, and what's always fun, remember, of course, LMS went off from the GPL as well, and it always comes down to the fact of how competitive is the region. The fact that Evos ended up taking down the Gibbon Marines means that's just the case here today. Yeah, and which region is going to come out on top here? We'll soon find out. And we'll also find out what the teams favor on patch 8.8. .8. It is actually the first look we got at it, get at it rather on the competitive scene. So guys, tell me who's hot, who's not, who we're going to see, who's out. Well, two of the big things that people need to know is that Kai'Sa and Irelia are enabled for this tournament. I know you're pretty familiar mm -hmm. with Kai'Sa over in the east, but for the west, this should be our first time seeing her. Some big changes to both LeBlanc and Ari as well. How prevalent they'll be in the meta is up for debate. But given our caliber of mid laners that we have in this tournament, you never really know what they're going to bring out. And remember, there was a jump from 8.6 to 8.8. .8. So in 8.7, you got to see the resolve changes specifically as well. So 100 HP lost level one means that champions like Tom Kench that also got a direct hit and nerfs with Braum, we might be seeing a lot more mage supports. Are we happy about that? A bit of a change? Yes. A lot of I like win yeah. lane, win game. No, let's stop with the Janna. Oh. Morgana, Nami, <laughs> Lulu, those are the champions I like. We can forget about the jump. Let's see what the teams bring out. Today is the kickoff of Group A. That means we will see all four teams of Group A playing today and all of them in the first two games, starting out with Gambit Esports versus Chaos Latin Gamers, and then Rainbow Seven versus Ascension. And that will make us know a bit more about the relative level of these teams the first time we see them play. So what are the matches that jump out to you guys here today, Ryan? I love clashing styles, which is why I think Game 6, Rainbow Seven versus Gambit, they played before in an international setting, and I want to see how they stock rank against one another in this tournament. Well. well, we also have the big Ladam clash, Rainbow Seven versus Chaos Latin Gamers up on Game Four. A lot to be discovered, but I do want to know from you guys, who do you think is going to end out on top at the end of the first day? I asked you guys beforehand. We're going to take a look just now. Who do you think is going to go possibly 3-0? As is going to top the group after game uh, day one, rather. You both have a lot of faith in Rainbow Seven. Yep. That's nice to see. Why yep. is that? Well, Rainbow Seven, Dave, uh, as we talked about earlier, internationally have always been very strong during the group stage specifically. And I feel like they've evolved a lot as a team over the last split, given the fact that they did not have White Lotus available to them. What's yeah. up with the difference in um, yeah, what's well, going on here, for man? Ascension Gaming? Some faith by Rask? Tell me, Look where does all. your faith go? Why do you believe in Ascension, Rask? Look, you look at Ascension Gaming, you see Rocky's play style, how he okay. can carry games for them as long as, I mean, as well as in Tresso with the experience that they have in the bottom side of the map, I just feel like they can take it. Uh, I personally don't have that same kind of faith. I'm looking more at Gambit. I feel like that they did change out their AD carry, and overall as a team, they seem to be improving. Their top side of the map feels very consistent and strong. And Ascension, I feel like their only good player is Rocky. So <laughs> I just don't have that same kind of faith, and they'll have to surprise me if they get themselves Well, around. we will keep track, obviously, of your picks here and there. Plus, um, it also important to remember that after day one, even if Rainbow 7 goes 3-0, and zero. they still have another full day oh, yes. of groups yes. to play on Saturday. So not all would be lost for the other teams. We will see a lot of interesting teams, a lot on the line, and a lot of key players. Raz, you already mentioned a couple of them, but I'd like to know from you, who do we have to look out for on day and one of MSI? Yeah, here's the thing about this, because we already talked about Rainbow 7. Unsurprisingly, I'm going to start with the first player being the man who hasn't even played a professional match in 2018, White Lotus. The guy is the demon of the LLN. The biggest thing is you haven't seen him play since World Plans of 2017. And if you cast your mind back towards that, you would have remembered his excellent laning presence. And then, of course, the godlike status in his team fighting. He has wonderful positioning. 
you can really see the confidence oozing out of him. So I'd love to see how he comes out today. And I think that when you spend an entire split playing with different AD carries, yet coming into an international tournament, you still say, no, we'll still put White no. Lotus in. That just goes to show how much confidence they have in his build. He's got to be pretty, pretty good. Uh, that is uh, the AD carry, of course, of Rainbow Seven. I heard you mention Ascension. You're happy about Ascension. Is there one or other player we got to look out for outside of Rocky? Yeah, now he already mentioned Rocky, but for me, it's going to be Entresso because he's a spiritual or at least successor of Levi in the GPL. He came out strong. Now, the biggest thing you have to watch out for him, he lights a fire under the opposition junglers because not only will he swipe camps away for you, I guess, in trespass in your camp, <laughs> he's always ahead of the pace in a sense because the best thing about it is he has a very high kills and assists at 15 as well. So he's just incredibly active. Hits the aggressive aspect of his play. Yeah, and he's not the only aggressive jungler that we're going to have in this tournament. Because Raz, I definitely heard you talking about Tia Wolf mm -hmm. earlier today as well. Big change for him, because coming into the stage today, he's bearing his fangs. Real aggressive aspect is that he's coming out with high tempo junglers, looking to not invade the enemy jungle, but just to find and hunt for ganks. So you have to watch out. Now, I had them at 0-3 coming into this, but they have a real high likelihood of being able to chip down teams. Because remember, it's a best of one setting before you get into the next round robin. And if it's going to start anywhere on the map, it's going to be off of Tier Wolf. Yeah, interestingly, you said 0-3 for Chaos Latin Gamers, but you think that Tier Wolf is the one, yes. if something happens, that can make it happen. And we'll find out if he can, because they're on stage right now. Chaos Latin Gamers up versus Gambit Esports in our very first game. And if we look at KLG as a team, as an organization, they have been incredibly, incredibly dominant in the CLS in Latin America South and have now secured their fifth championship. It was... Not as clear cut in the regular season, but definitely in the playoffs, they took that crown. Exactly that. They did finish second at the end of the regular season. They just really struggled against the first seed team rebirth, who they ended up meeting in the finals. It was a very tense, very back and forth full five games, but it was KLG that were able to secure themselves the victory and make their way here to the MSI. Well, this is the roster of KLG. One big change is Mantaraya is no longer in that top lane. This time around, it's the rookie. Nate, how much is that going to change the dynamic of KLG? Yeah, it just comes down to the fact that he is a role player. He may not have the experience of Mantaraya, but now it just means that they can play a tank through the top lane and focus straight on towards jungle and bottom lane. I want to see what uh, Tier Wolf can do in the bottom lane specifically, just because Fix is playing a lot of Caitlyn. So you, all you have to do is look to see a job. It makes Nate's job a lot easier. All right, we'll see what strategy they decide to go with in their first game. Always very important. And they're up versus Gambit Esports from the LCL. They return to the international stage, and they are coming off a dominant win in their region. They just 3 0 rocks in the final. So just as much hype and confidence behind them as KLG. Yeah, but not confident enough, because when they went to the last week of the regular season, they decided to swap out Blasting for Lodic. They wanted to find, or at least, a good AD carry just so when they get onto the international stage that they do not perform poorly. And he is still a bit of a young player, but he, fortunately for him, he's surrounded by a wealth of experience. You just look at that lineup, and it's not hard to see the international exposure that these players have. So you're expecting him to kind of fit into that roster and help facilitate the superstar carries of Stegos and Kira. Yeah, Diamond also touched on it in the opening video. People remember the old glory of Diamond and of Edward and Moscow 5, but this is the guy that is calling all the shots in Gambit right now. Kira has been really good. We know him from Albux, Nox, Luna, but he really hasn't stopped to perform in the LCL. No, he certainly has not. I would argue to say that he is the best player that the LCL has ever produced, given his consistency and how often he's been sitting at the top of that league. My favorite thing about him is his champion, Ocean. He seems to be able to play anything. You ban out some of his strongest champions, and he just comes out with another one. That's the biggest thing about it, because at the end of the day, if you keep banning his champions, he goes on towards the Azir, and he still performs. Yeah. The man has confidence. We saw him earlier today. It's just interesting to see what you can actually do up against him. We'll see. And between these two teams, both Gambit Esports and KLG, they crush it regionally. They get that championship. But when it comes to the international stage, they haven't been able to take that final step and clear those yeah. play-ins. So I know that you have KLG going 0-3, so you don't see them winning versus Gambit here? No, unfortunately. Of course, they can trip them up. The biggest thing is the stylistic difference of KLG being on the map a lot faster, looking for ganks while Gambit does want to scale up. The only difference is the fact that Gambit does have stronger vision control to protect their early game. So it's going to be on KLG to actually improve from the last we've seen them. Yeah, I feel like KLG as a team just tend to 
kind of be blindly aggressive in yeah. their play style, a very big shift from what we've seen from old KLG. Uh, and against a team like Gambit, I don't think they're going to find those early game advantages unless they really tunnel on the young rookie of Lodic. He could be a potential avenue for them to get a lead, but I'm still looking at Kira. I still think that he has such a big advantage over his mid lane opposition, and I think Gambit will take the win. Two votes for Gambit from my analysts over KLG. We're about to find out. Time to kick off the action here in Berlin. Take it away, Dracos and Rusty. Thank you very much, Shox. Hello, everyone. I'm Daniel Dracos here, as mentioned, with Zach Rusty Pie, international man of mystery, flying his way man all the mystery. way to Berlin. I'll take it, man. I'm just happy to be here. It's another play-ins tournament. I'm always here. You can't get rid of me, no matter how hard you try, Drake. And I mean, it's just an exciting matchup to be had, for sure. I just want to see what's going to happen. But let's start by meeting the teams on the blue side, representing the LCL. It is Gambit Esports. Top lane, PvP, Steos. Jungle, Diamond Prox. In the mid lane, Kira. AD carry, Lodic. Support, Edward. Coach, Atramains. And their sub jungler, Segamitsu. Their opponents from the CLS, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chaos Latin Gamers. In the top lane, Nate. In the jungle, Tear Wolf. Mid lane, Plugo. AD carry, Vix. Support, Slow. Coach, Pierre. Sub, AD carry, Zealot. Give it up one more time for Gambit Esports and Chaos Latin Gamers. Players, please take your seats. Rusty as we get ready. I mean, they talked about it on the desk already, but prestigious lineups here. That's one of the things I love about these playing events. We get to see a lot of the same players return, refine yeah. their strategy because so many of these guys are regional powerhouses. They absolutely dominate their domestic leagues. Mm -hmm. They come again and again to these playing stages, and I feel like we see something different from them every time. Yeah, they certainly do, and if the first team we look at is Chaos Latin Gamers, you'll note that they've won five out of their last seven season titles. So they are a dominant team domestically. Even if this split was a struggle, they're an organization that constantly seems to find success. And once again, they're here today, and we when you speak towards that struggle, though, it's something that they have to get over, that hurdle they have to succumb and actually get past to look good on the international stage. But they're always here, so they've always got that opportunity. Absolutely are. We'll look at their opponents in a moment. But in the meantime, throughout MSI, guys, you can show your support by picking up Conqueror, Varus, and Ward skins. That's going to give 25% of all proceeds going to that prize pool. You can see it's already building up because that skin is is awesome. Actually cool. Actually great <laughs> skin. Very big fan of it, have bought it myself. You can contribute to the prize pool by getting it as well. Get yourself a black, gold, and red Varus. Styling kids, build a Rage Blade. Build AP, it's fun. Why not? It's actually the best build, just do it. <laughs> we'll see if anyone on the opposite side, that is for Gambit, wants to go for it. Maybe Lodek wants to try his hand on that AP Varus. He is kind of the rookie player though. I want to see exactly how they use him on this otherwise, you know, kind of storied yeah, uh, LCL lineup. Exactly. When you look towards Gambit, they've got two members from Moscow 5 of old. They've got two members from Albus Nox Luna, which is a 2016 Worlds team that everyone should know and love. And then you've got Lodic, the new AD carry, the man who has a lot to prove coming into this because he is new to the team as well as the roster entirely. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with the first international event of 2018, we are testing a new broadcast look for the draft. So be sure to let us know what you think by tweeting at LOL Esports on Twitter. But of course, Rusty, We've seen it, we're ready, let's get into it. Kaisa already banned, taken off the table, supports following suit on the side of Gambit. Yeah, frankly, not shocked that a Kaisa will be banned, something that you'll expect to see for the remnants of this tournament. Kaisa just super strong right now, no matter what the patch is. And of course, we are an 8.8, .8, so 
still moving forwards. And it's not just the Kaiser that you will start to see more and more of, it is that Caitlyn. The AD carry roll is a big place of focus. And just bot lane in general, we see two support bands laid out, two AD carry bands laid out. Skarner, though, appears to still be at the top of everyone's lists in the jungle. This Gambit do prioritize taking him away in this situation. A yeah, super regional thing as well. Uh, Skarner isn't something that you see in every region, but when it is there, it is a super big deal. And you've got the Morgana and the Alistar gone with that. Two major supports being focused. Morgana, weirdly enough, in the LPL was a mid laner once, but it is actually a support. And that does leave up options like the Karma and the Rakan. Immediate Rakan lock in. They ban away the Anivia from Kira, his comfort pick. All star on that champion. But now the Rakan locked in. Rusty. I'm not going to say it yet. Rusty, we were talking about it. I think you got to let the people know. Guys, this might not be a support Rakan. Rumor has it, maybe you followed Perks on Twitter and you've seen Rakan in the mid lane may just be a thing. We're going to see exactly yeah. where it ends up this time around, but the Karma will be locked in on the side of KLG as well as the Scion to follow. And I will say that it's a low chance given the rest of the bands that we've seen and the Karma taken away, but it is still a chance. You can still potentially see the Rakan in the middle lane. Looking towards the other side, however, with Chaos Latin Gamer's first two picks, they have rounded themselves out with a lot of utility already. They're only missing the damage and we're only two picks in as it stands. So they've set up a team composition in the makings, perhaps protecting their AD carry. And this may just confirm that the Rakan is going to the bot lane. Zaya and Rakan linked up together, of course, have received some hits in terms of how they function as a duo, but still potentially as terrifying as ever. Absolutely. When they're the duo, they are still going to be strong. It's the availability of Rakan specifically, no matter how much you nerf them. If you've got double the dash distance, that's double the engage distance potentially there. And often you'll just bait your AD carry to stand forwards and you're always there to help. Good potential to turn it around. Gambit debating on their last pick of the first pick phase. See if they want to match top lane. Trundle, of course, a flex pick by nature. See exactly where they want to put that one as we progress Ooh. further. And a quick Almost no hesitation coming in from the side of KLG, giving Tearwolf that Graves in the jungle. Yeah, you see the Trundle locked in and immediately the Graves follows for Tearwolf. And Graves is a champion that you will start to see more of in the jungle role as well moving throughout this tournament. Super good clear as you would expect. Graves hasn't changed in that regard at all. And he can bully people very successfully. And Trundle, very difficult to actually catch Graves if they ever meet in the jungle 1v1. You can just dash over the pillar and you're pretty safe. Easy escapes, get to farm up nice and safe. And of course, the champion has just been slowly banned consecutively over so many patches, now finally showing his face here on the international stage. Vladimir taken off the board. We did see that a little bit. Kind of across regions in the more recent patches. Tristana taken off, so a lot of the 80 carry picks getting just chipped away at. We have to wonder what fix is actually going to be able to pick up here yeah. as the Ornn is also taken off the table. That's the curious thing. So we've got the Caitlyn, the Kaiser, you've got Zaya locked in and Tristana now being banned away. That's a lot of his champion pool there specifically for fix. So moving past this, hyper carries is still a place presumably they may start to look towards when you've got the Karma locked in, you've got a Scion to stand in front, but their options very limited moving through the rest of this. Varus is still something that could be seen, however, and maybe alongside this is the other remaining option. Taking the time, really debating what AD carry they want to lock in, saving that last pick for mid lane, or potentially tops. The Scion remains a flex as well. But Jin going to be the lock in here for KLG. A bit more utility from Fix on the bottom side of the map. I want to see how this affects their play style, if they're comfortable not putting Fix on the more hyper carry style pick. And note the Gambit banned away the Braum, so they're pretty aware that the Karma should be going towards the middle lane, and that's where you look towards the support role as the remaining pick for KLG and what do they want to keep their AD carry alive? Well, to me, the answer isn't necessarily to do that anymore. It's just a Jin who's going to be standing in the back lines, contributes damage, but isn't your Cogmore, isn't the person who stands in front. It may actually be about protecting Tearwolf as he gets control through the early game, which is pretty standard for KLG. And I love these compositions because we know KLG want to play through that early game game, but much more comfortable later on. Well, you've got the Zaya, the Rakan, the Galio all together. So when Gambit combo. does decide to fight Rusty, Ooh, yeah. it's going to be wild. And now the Gangplank backing it up as well. Going right to the top of PvP Stay House. Both of the carries here for Gambit set up for some aggressive fights. And we watched Gangplank go through to the ninth pick in this draft phase as well. It was spoken towards Nate that if you give him Gangplank, that is above and beyond his best champion. But they're able to give that one away. Gambit's able to lock that down as their last pick for themselves. And the compositions are set here. We've just added more engage to the mix. I love it. Jin Leona versus Zaya Rakan. There is so much CC in this bottom lane, Rusty. Someone is dying in the first eight minutes. I can feel it. I do feel like there is harmony with one of those bottom lanes, however. The other one is a Jin Leona, which does raise <laughs> some questions as to how it's going to play out. But it's not the worst combo. Jin, if he's able to keep his distance, is usually in a safe spot. Leona's just going to have to be a 
super frontline tank for him right now. Although, otherwise, things can unwind very negatively. And then you throw Galio into the mix. Then you throw Trundle into the mix. They can lock you down. That team composition, when it comes to engaging and picking, is quite strong. We want to see exactly how it unfolds. What do we expect from the side of Chaos Land Gamers? We know they like to play more towards the early game. What are their options here, Rusty? I mean, right now, it is all about the Graves to me. When you look at that whole draft, where does it center around? Karma has very good push in the mid lane. Scion should be able to control the top lane as well. All eyes should go to Tearwolf. He's the star of the team and for good reason, but he usually comes towards the bottom lane, so that's where it gets tricky. Here we go, folks. Game one. Chaos Latin Gamers versus Gambit Esports. Players taking a brief moment of pause, debating their options here before they load in the game. And it was mentioned, you know, it's a single best of ones, double round robin, every game super important. Starting the tournament with a victory is the best and only way that you want to be doing this if you're either of these teams, because the only spot that matters is first. Absolutely a difficult spot to be, knowing that you have to be better than every single one of the teams in your group to even make it to the next stage, to make it to that best of five, to earn a spot on the MSI main stage. There it is, you can hear the fans ready, cheering for their respective teams. And Rusty, eyes on Graves, we expect the early game. We talked about mid and top, push in favor of KLG. What do we expect from Gambit? How does Gambit play around that? Can they anticipate the strategy coming in from KLG? Well, I don't know if you're too familiar with Diamond Prox, but he is a man that does some very abstract things when it comes <laughs> to playing League of Legends. And whilst he is on a conventional champion in the Trundle, the way that he passes and the way that he plays around in the early game is sometimes a little bit more unconventional. And he knows, and he should, that the top side of the map is very powerful for KLG, and it could be a place where there's a cause for concern. He may hover that area, but he also knows that Chaos Latin game is always gank bottom. You watch a single best of five from them, you acknowledge that that is their one play style. And there is a chance that he tries to cater his style towards that side of the map, and they have the Zyra Khan. So honestly, KLG, they know what they're doing. Everyone knows what they're doing. And how to Gambit respond is really up to them. And one of the nice things for game, very small, Rusty, but I love this. So we have Gangplank with the Klepto over the grasp. And normally I'd be like, ooh, what's the decision process here? But he's procked it once now, a single parlay, and he immediately gets the Elixir of Fortitude. This is the dream start for any Klepto user on the top side of the map, as you do see the junglers picking up their first games. Absolutely. Yeah. Getting that on your first proc is... He wants more as well. I mean, you're into the Scion matchup, so there's plenty of opportunities to get those procs off. And he's not going to be in the best position when you're looking at the push. That should still be belonging to Nate. Not of the focus, oh, though. Yeah, it may well be down here. Trundle's in. creative passing. No chance to escape the chain CC is coming in. Prime and Prox right there. First blood for Gambit. So early in the game. Goodbye, KLG early game. It slows a level one Leona, so there is no real opportunity to help his ally who has just been taken down. That is very cheeky coming out of Gambit. The fact that they get the kill makes it all the better. Now, Tier Wolf will try and trade, but Diamond Prox is the real winner. And this is the innovation we've come to expect from Gambit, always creative with how they like to play on the international stage. Since the days of Alpex Nox, Luna, when it was Kira and PvP Steos on that lineup. Good news is Tearwolf does get to steal this back. He's going to get the level 3. He's going to be a little bit ahead in terms of CS in the jungle. It's going to be difficult here, knowing that that bot side has such a big advantage. Yeah, we'll get to see that again, of course. Diamond Prox starts at the blue buff. He's got the Zyra Khan, and you acknowledge how strong that is at level 1. Fix. Whilst he tries to flash away, there is no such thing as a safe point when Trundle's even got the pillar to force that flash. You are just dead. And you gotta feel for Fix. You know he knows that he's weaker in the lane. Starts to boots, doesn't want to be anywhere near anybody, and suddenly there's a level 2 Trundle immediately in your face. No red buff, just takes a blue and comes right bot lane. That's the keeping myself the heck away from everybody approach with the boots. Having four extra potions as well, opposed to any one pot from a Doran's blade or shield. Knows full well that he's going to get poked out, such as the nature of a Zyra Khan as well. And one thing you talked about was that KLG always want to gank, always want to play around bottom, but now with the way the jungle is split up, Rusty, it just feels like Diamond has control of the bottom side. Of course, we see a small trade here. And I think you're right. And that's the place that we'll have to look. We just pretend this doesn't happen. It's effectively your tank top laners. When you are KLG and you always play towards bottom lane... Actually, it might die. Hero. Getting frisky, feeling the trade, but... Lugo just does not hesitate to extend that. Kira started that trade as well. That's where it got a bit curious from him. But back to the point, KLG always play towards bottom lane. We've mentioned that. But they've drafted away from it, which is where I think they'll be okay with this. You know, losing your AD carry at level one, something that they never, ever want to do. But the fact that it was just the Jin in this situation means that things could be worse. Oh, Kira now going to go in. 
We'll use the taunt, not going to connect. Tier Wolf trying to step forward. Get a bit of damage down. Tier already burning his TP. May just be forced back again. Tier Wolf not going to get aggressive there. Not going to use a flash or anything else to commit for the kill, but really awkward spot for Kira to be in. Taking so much damage, burning the TP, and immediately getting chunked out again. Yeah, super curious from Kira. Of course, he keeps dashing forwards with no vision, no knowledge of where Tier Wolf is. And Plugo, he was due for a recall, so trying to play aggressive and force him out of lane was the game plan there from Kira. But he's still got the teleport now, and Kira has no health. So he is actually pushed out of lane after this wave. There's a chance that you just watch Kira recall once again. And that gives no pressure to the map. That does not set his team up whatsoever and consistently unlocks Tier Wolf. Plugo doing exactly what KLG needed to be pressuring out the mid lane. Consistent pressure being applied. Kira definitely suffering from that. Now Diamond Prox returns to the top side of his jungle. No camp's going to be there for him. Raptor's on the opposite side if he wants to push for it. But Tier Wolf is coming on the top side. Does get spotted by a ward. This is the vision control we heard about from Raz on the desk not letting Tier Wolf get in for some of those aggressive games. Yeah, KLG have a 90% win rate at 15 minutes if they actually have a gold lead. They are an early aggressive team, and it has been seen that they're not too sure how to come back when they're at a point that it's a deficit. So for Gambit so far, it's only five minutes in, but they've kicked this one off on the right foot. They keep that momentum going. KLG do not lose gracefully. And Rusty, I just have to keep looking at the bottom lane, man. Swiftness boots for the fix does not want to fight ever. This man has decided the first 12 minutes of this game, he will not even trade. He is here to push a lane. He is here to walk away from Isaiah and Rakan. That is a tough spot to be in. You see that with Sivers occasionally, you know, the, the late game CS win conditions, but not with the Jin. There's battle stations, and it's not a safe place to be in for yourself. It's hard to kill him. Very hard to get in range, especially as a Rakan. So you've got that going for you. But. And I mean, if you're KLG, oh, Major C, the engage here. Tier Wolf is on the bottom side. That's the chain CC we talked about. Edward trying to make his way out. Tier Wolf, though, hungry for a little bit more. Not going to find the kill, but good pressure put down on the bottom side of the map. Well, you'll take the damage. It is a good trade for you in the end. And you have shown your jungler, however. So for Gambit, they've got information. And you can't really kill a Rakan when he's got a Zarya next to him, regardless of the distance between them. The dash being increased is just fantastic for them. So he'll live. Well done from Edward as well. Didn't actually need to use a summoner. A good spot to be in. Using the mobility of Rakan to get out just as easily as he could use it to get in. Tier Wolf though going to start to take more camps away. Not really a big jungle CS difference between the two. Maybe not quite the lead that Tier Wolf wanted to get in the early game, but has been putting down a couple of ganks. So not going to have quite the lead that maybe a Graves is used to. You know, looking past this point, we're just starting to crest over to the level 6 mark, and this is where a lot of opportunities open up for the side of Gambit, when you've got the Galio combo that you can work with, the Trundle Pillar even to zone people away, but it is mostly around that bottom lane when you've got a Rakan that has to go forwards. And I think the moment that they start to look is the moment that Edward ticks over to the level 6 point, when he gets that big power spike and can utilize Kira effectively. And we also have to remember, this is when we really expect KLG to be in control of the map, is this early game. Slow, just trying to keep the aggression coming out. Because we look at it, we heard about the carry duo. It is PvP Steos, it is Kira. And really, Kira there for the utility, and Steos needs the time to scale up. And KLG bringing down Pluga right now. They're actually looking for a dive. There's no Scion available, however. And the Defiance not going to connect there on the Zenith Blade. That's not good news. There comes the Jank Clank all. Now they're trying to back it out. The damage comes in slow. They're going to be in a tough Dying spot here. In. They're ready to turn it. They're just leaving him to die. In comes Kira. He's going to get one. Actually all going to go over in the end. Beautiful turnaround for Gambit. And you can see the idea from KLG, right? Get everyone together, group them up, go towards bottom lane. But they didn't have Scion. And then they actually lose the trade, even having to flash away here, Plugo. That was the start of a potentially okay idea where the execution was off in the first place. And they said, in for a penny, in for a pound. We may as well commit to the dive. And it goes completely sideways. This is exactly how Gambit liked to play the game, Rusty. We saw it in their finals. Anytime the opposition would try to make a play, anytime Rocks would try to make a play, they were there to punish. It's holding true here on the international stage up against Chaos Latin Gamers. Let's look at it one more time. And it starts with Slow missing the E, of course, on the Leona. So has to flash forwards. And he's tanking the turret because he's the first person to go in so can't contribute past that point just has to run away tier wolf whilst he was level six tried to burst tried to escape and then diamond prox was there at the correct moment as well hits the pillar and locks them all down under the turret very well done from gambit as a counter gank and then of course forcing flugo's flash in the end a little extra bonus on top oh and a tough spot for tier wolf we know tier wolf the veteran of this team the vocal leader and we've heard from experts when the team starts to fall behind he stops talking and the team starts to fall apart. We have to see if that's something that he's changed. He can keep that mental together 
and keep this team going in a, in a pretty difficult early game. Gambit now, 2k gold lead and an Infernal Dragon to boot. Happy to have it. They've got the GP. They've got the time to scale up. Oh, they're good. They have all the time in the world. Karma has control of mid, but starts to scale off a little bit as well. Usually builds supportive and empowers the AD carry, but the AD carry is a Jin with boots of swiftness. Has actually got himself a BF sword at least, but that's a lot of scaling still left to happen before they really come online. For an early game team to not have that early game, and for Gambit to even have an Infernal Drake and be a team fighting team, they are sitting pretty. Talk about level six as being a big opportunity, but Lodic now with his level six, Edward as well, means that pretty easy for them to dictate space to the bottom lane, especially as slow as lagging behind. Needs that ulti before he can really threaten too much more, but Tear Wolf is here. Ready to commit the time to try to make a play happen, trying to bait Edward into getting aggressive. He is the kind of guy who loves to make those plays. It's really difficult to make this play once again. There's no untilled spellbook, however, from Edward. He hasn't swapped over to a cleanse by any means against Leona. He's committed to Ignite, so if they can lock him down and they can keep him locked, they might be able to go for the kills. Ultimately, it's a, it's a Graves ganking, so it's hard to do. Trying to use the pink ward as bait. Trying to hit that Zenith blade, I think immediately giving away their hand the second they go for the engage. Is baiting for the ward. Has to get it. Gambit's playing on the edge here. They yeah. want to go in. You can tell, but they know something's wrong. They know that there's a reason that KLG are playing so far forward despite a deficit. Of course, Fix with a small CS lead, though. Happy to have it as he pushes in. Will disappear instantly as Lodic catches the wave. Diamond Prox continues to farm. And really, Gambit are sitting pretty rusty. Ten minutes in, we thought, hey, maybe they'll get a slight deficit, but they've got a pretty significant advantage. Yeah, they're very well off. At the same time as well, you know, Graves meant to be a hard farming jungler and he spent most of his time looking towards lanes and Diamond Prox didn't go towards the Tiamat on his trundle. Usually you'll do that against something like the Graves if you want to keep up with them. Instead, he's just completely rushed his Cinder Hulk out. Super tanky and keeping up with the Graves that has spent all of his time looking towards those lanes. So they are very well off. Exactly what they need here. We talked about the importance of kind of starting this stage with a win. A bit well on their way. KLG not out of it yet by any means, but... Things are looking a little bit difficult. Nate on the top side, though, doing well to keep up with the GP so far. Has been a weakness of his domestically, falling behind in these early laning phases, but have to see maybe the San can contribute more in the coming fights. Yeah, we are at a teleport time, right? We've got the Trinity Force for PvP Steos, however, so if you're looking to fight right now as KLG, that may be a mistake. Note that the Gangplank has the ult, has the teleport, and Gambit are the ones going forwards right now. They're just threatening. Slow, though, wants to go in. The TP is going to be used. The Chain CC follows up. Locked down. Out comes the ultimate from... Gonna find it. Sion is gonna go forward, looking for the chain CC. Lodok has to use the ult. No more defensive tools used, and he gets taken down in the end. Tier now running for his life. Tier Wolf on the hunt has the Sion there. The CC, the slow knockup, not gonna connect. He's reloading. He's looking for a little bit more, but it's Kira who's next on the menu. One more shot, taking him down. As Fix finds the kill, another one to follow. KLG right back in the game. Now Plugo looking for the one remaining kill. Will not get it onto Edward, but the name of the game seems to be whoever dives is the one who loses the team fight right now. And it was Gambit's turn to dive. They thought they had the opportunity, but it was messy. It was very far from clean. And they're meant to pay for it. KLG back in the game. They will lose the turret top lane though, so they start to bleed objectives. But they are well and truly still within touching distance. PvP Steos fine to give up his team there a little bit, knowing he could get the tower. Meantime, KLG will respond back, but not the tower first blood, Rusty. And still a deficit for KLG, despite the proactive or reactive play there working out in their favor on the bottom side of the map. I mean, it's only ultimately around 1,000 gold now. And it was a lot more before that. If the dive was successful, it could have been an incomprehensible amount for them that they would never be able to come back from, right? So ultimately, KLG are in a very good spot from where they were one minute ago. But you have to credit that to Gambit, oddly enough, that they chose to make that play too aggressively. They didn't sit back continue to scale this time. They thought they could die. And I feel like you have to praise Slow, turning the fight immediately, knowing he could land the skill shots necessary onto that Zaya. Of course, Nate is here spotting this Rift Herald out. Multiple members now coming. The swap will come through for the side of KLG. They can heal up, but no Rift Herald going to fall for either side. So well played by Nate to disrupt the objective take there. But unfortunately, it does mean bottom tower is going to fall. So yet another advantage over to the side of Gambit. It's on a cannon wave too. They chose to swap their lanes. And yes, they'll be able to stop the Herald. Ultimately, Gambit having their bottom lane away is Diamond. Main CC. Diamond Prox can absorb as many of those stats as he fine. can, but just walks it out. A lot Here's of resources a committed. After all, just uses the pillar, uses the ultimate, just waddles away. Not a lot that can lock him down, even though Leona hits every form of crowd control. He's still a trundle. There's no damage to contribute towards that. KLG is still trying to threaten the top lane outer turret above all else, but they are so far behind in the tempo 
The Gambit are just answering everything and then some. Yeah, and of course we look at that engage. Tearwolf just doesn't even have a warrior enchant yet. He cannot deal enough damage to take down Diamond Brox in those short skirmishes. He's going to need a little bit more here. When is he going to decide to back and complete some of these items? Because if he is the guy that we want to look at, if he is the guy who can carry this team, he needs to share some of this damage burden. And right now, he's not contributing too much. He does have the money to actually purchase it, so you'd hope that that recall will be continued through and that he will get the items going for himself. He's in a position where he's not strong currently until then, and that's a moment where KLG could actually start to press forwards. They don't have the Jin damage fully online, but if they put him with Graves, it does exist. KLG going for yet another aggressive play under tower. Maybe going to look to take down Kira here, but they see the Trundle. Good bit of vision there placed in the mid lane to make sure they know exactly who's coming. Because the worst situation, Rusty, would really be to try to dive a Galio when a Trundle shows up. I mean, you could almost say the worst case scenario is trying to dive a Galio. Yeah, true. Just but leaving it there. <laughs> I mean, if you dive him by himself, like diving a Shen, he can't ult anybody, right? That's uh, unless true. they're close enough for him to get out. Yeah, just generally all around feels like a bad idea. Probably they not. And now Nate. His sole job is to disrupt Diamond Prox taking objectives, and he will keep that trend going, although he's Well, Diamond's completely damage. stuck. Stuck between him and the dragon, wants to heal for a little bit more, but Tear Wolf overstaying his welcome in the enemy jungle, not seeing the vision in the brush, and gets taken out immediately by the Gambit bottom lane. The deficit just continues to grow for KLG, but you can see they're desperate to make it back somewhere. And you will note that Diamond Prox also survived down near the dragon as well. They weren't able to pick him up. Tear Wolf perhaps trying to trade, acknowledging that they knew where the trundle was. Might have been able to go over to the blue buff, but it is a lack of respect towards what Azaya Khan can do. And even now, Edward starts to push forwards. He's starting to feel himself as well. Has Merc Treads rushed? He's not too worried about the stuns, wants to stand in front. And that's how you know the Gambit is feeling confident. Because you know Edward wants to be in people's faces 24-7. He's been the same player since the dawn of League of Legends. Always wanting to be aggressive. And when he's confident enough to walk into two enemies, you can tell his team has that lead to enable him to do oh. so. The problem with Scion. Knocking things around as well, resetting the aggro. It feels bad, man. I mean, they'll still get it, but that's tragic. Uh, eventually, Karma does not have it now, and will have to go get it after this wave, so a bit of a time sink. It won't be the end of the world. And Edward takes his time here, lets the CC come through, waits for his 80 carry. Smite comes out, but Tearwolf just gifting it over to that support. Yeah, good from Edward to save his ultimate. Didn't use the whole combo at once. Knew full well that Tearwolf was just trying to smite it and get out, but prevented that from happening at all and bought a lot of time for his AD carry loading to come in to secure that. And now Diamond Prox is looking so comfortable in the jungle as well, well on the way to the Zeke's Convergence. And we still see Graves lagging behind. Tear Wolf has the attack speed boots, has the war him. And yeah, maybe he can duel someone if he catches him out, but just can't find the opportunities. Slow to onto slow. He's just gonna go for the disengage as Gambit just continue to have pressure about everywhere but mid. They've actually just kept laning. We're 17 minutes in, they're really content with sitting in their lanes and forcing KLG to come to them, and that is not a bad decision when you've got a Galio and a Gangplank that can be there in a You're on a ward. That's a little awkward. He is going to get locked up. Did see the ward coming, but in it goes the hero's entrance. Not going to connect with anybody but slow. Nate is available on the backside. Gambit potentially caught themselves in a bit of a tough spot here. We'll get the knockup of the one. Just going to connect with the Diamond Prox. No, the flash out will take him to safety. Edward. Leaps out onto Lodic, and there is the curtain call, but who is it going to be curtains for? Diamond Prox disrupting as best as he can, and no one is going to drop. Great escape coming in from Gambit. Yeah, nobody dying, but KLG still have control of the Herald area. They should be able to secure the objective. You can see Gambit now pushing forwards in the river one more time, perhaps looking to catch them off and prevent them from getting the objective, and they are looking. Steos is here. As a Trinity Force can do a lot of damage. The taunt available, Kira. Gonna lock up Nate immediately. Slow is going to go in, but he has no mana to get out. He's gonna get taken down in just a moment. Lodic grabs the kill. Edward weaving in and out of the back line to keep his carry safe. Lugo and the rest of the KLG lineup split. They may just have to give this one over. Tearwolf has this might available, but no position to respond. Yet another objective going over to the side of Gambit. Just resorting to having Plugo attempt to steal that one away. Ultimately will not be stolen. The smite there from Diamond Prox to secure it with the chomp at the same time. And now they have a Rift Herald that they can summon towards the middle lane if they would like. And that is the one left as Kira. Looking for the taunt, isn't going to find it. They're trying to play around PvP Stayos. They know he's strong. Great auto attack on the barrel to deny anything else. KLG still comfortable in those skirmishes, but it's the fights that have been turning against them. And Rusty, you can see the results. Never ending there. Constant skirmishes. This is the second in a row looking towards the Herald where Nate is the only person who gets caught by the taunt. Slow thinks this is a brilliant idea to go forwards and protect his top laner. In the end, it was the, it was Slow that does go down. 
giving an opportunity to Gambit once again. And you can see Fix doesn't even get a chance to auto attack in that fight. Gets a dancing grenade off, gets a snare, gets to ult, but doesn't even get the chance to approach to auto attack. Not comfortable going forward when he knows Edward still has those engage options. When he sees that GP, now with the Sterex completed as well. Couldn't look too much worse for KLG when you look forwards to the rest of the game. And the Gangplank now being 40 to 50 odd CS ahead as well as having those two items, and it's a Kleptomancy Gangplank, so the gold difference starts to stretch even further. Usually you want to be able to keep him down as best you can, knowing full well that once you hit the item spikes, things go in his direction and this, eventually. And it's the scary part, because you're Nate, you've built the tabby, you have the tank items to, to survive. Yes, you may not be able to win, but you can survive in that lane. Now, on the other hand, if you look at the rest of the team without the tank items, GP is going to start two-shotting people, Rusty. And when you're the Jin with no mobility, and no one really to protect you outside of a Karma in these fights, you got to feel nervous. Those Swifty boots not going to yeah. count for much. The old Arden sensor that can be built for the Jin isn't going to do the most work for him regardless. There's a bit of attacks, but you know, it's a lot of damage for a Jin. It's nice to have, but there's no on-hit healing like you would like of the old Arden sensor. And now, of course, you're dealing with the Zaya, who will have the Zeeks as well. So additional power, the on-hit damage, and a Trundle who gets the pseudo Sunfire Cape and AoE slow. Immobile champions are not going to have a good time in these fights. Even if they are mobile, the Trundle Pillar can completely throw a spanner into the works. The Herald here, good timing on the summon. There's no Graves nearby. He's in base, so they can't really respond to this whatsoever. Stale's laying down the barrels, looking for the setup. Still, they're going to try to go in. There is the curtain call. They could be in trouble. Not quite tanky enough. Edward charming up every member of the team. Here comes the heroic entrance. Will catch slow out. The chain CC is there. The Leona is locked down, but she will try to make it to safety. A beautiful pillar comes in from Diamond Prox to stop anything else from happening, and Gambit are just running away with this game. Great pillar, an unfortunate sacrifice. Diamond has to look pretty carefully. He doesn't want to die here on the backside. They take the turret, and they are able to disengage. Should spend their money right now, get those shops in. It is Baron o'clock on the Gambit clock as well, so they'll start to reset, get vision control, and control those side lanes. In absolute control. Not a lot you can do. KLG, they've got some consolation prizes. They've gotten the tower back. They've gotten the Cloud Drake. But that is about it. This exchange just brutal. Diamond actually is stunned up under the turret repeatedly, but is still a trundle. So after all of the stuns wear off, he's able to use the ultimate and actually continues to tank it pretty much full health. The rest of the combo here catches slow out. The trundle pillar once again, Diamond. Very well done from him to ensure that the support of Chaos Lightning Gamers goes down for his third death. And Rusty, the CC combo of the pillar plus the heroic entrance plus the Rakan leaping in, it just, there, it just feels like there's no answer on the side of KLG to stop this from happening, short of a Scion, who just takes too long to charge up that knockup. And you know when a Galio starts coming towards you, channeling the taunt as well, there's a 50-50 of will he flash onto me or will he just keep walking? But imagine there's a Trundle Pillar in between all of that that means you have to flash. Things get very deadly for you, and especially with you summer just, spells. You don't get choices anymore when a Trundle Pillar appears behind you and you see that nice little circle telling you Galio's on his way to the fight. You flash or you die at this point if you are KLG. A lot more death at this point of the game, unfortunately, for this lineup. The Gambit were coming in as a team that wanted to prove themselves after a, a pretty crushing defeat in the world's plans and are already on to a good start. And one thing you do have to look towards is it's not the full AP Galio that you tend to see from most of them at the moment, starting with the Abyssal Mask first, which by no means is a bad decision. But moving forwards, they will have a lot more damage in many of those roles. As it currently stands, you would say there's a lot more importance on Steos being nearby or controlling the side lanes a bit more heavily to enable them to have better skirmishes or engage, engages. As it currently stands, KLG getting towards item spikes at the very least. They can find themselves with a fighting chance from this deck. Graves finishing the Black Cleaver will be big for fighting out the Trundle, fighting out the tankier picks on the opposite side. Rusty, I think it's important to remember, we look at the Gambit lineup and it's easy to assume all this veteran talent, but Lodic, their AD carry, I mean, Playing League of Legends part-time, still a university student. A lot of people were questioning, you know, why why is Blasting being taken out on such a strong roster? But you can see here, even against a bot-side focused team like KLG, this man is putting up numbers. 2-1-4, and four, backed up by Edwards, 2-0-4. and four. These guys both with 100% kill participation. We expected mid and top to be the center of attention, but bot side has shown up really well. It seems like Gambit have done their homework, and you're right, Lodic having a very good game so far. No nerves seem to be getting to the rookie on his first international stage debut especially after such a little amount of games played with the team. Meshing very well with Edward. See the aggressive style of Edward. And once again, just the second this man has lead, he's fearless, Rusty. He's walking face first into a Graves. He is unconcerned. He can leap out in an instant. 
You said it earlier, Baron o'clock. And that's actually a curious itemization choice from Kira Dracos. He goes towards the Rylai's Crystal Scepter as his second item, and I think that's actually quite nice for locking down people with the Q. Throw it out from long ranges, slow them down. Diamond speaking of court. Looking for the turn to burn, immediately using the Tundra Wild. Down he goes. My god, the damage coming in from this Gambit lineup is just too much, and with the jungler dead, it's made to signal the Baron. You can tell the vision control is absolutely there for Gambit, but the only way KOG get into the area is by face checking. Face checking against the composition of a Trundle and a Rakan will always take you down. So Gambit pushing forwards once again, securing even further vision control. Now the kill has been secured. The choice is theirs. Do they risk the Baron? Why risk it when you get a free tower mid? Just continue to push him forward, and honestly, the gold lead is so immense at this stage of the game. 8k in their favor. Feels like KLG are just running out of options so quickly. Ardent Sensor finally coming in, backing up the Graves, backing up the Jin, but might just be too little too late, Rusty. Does feel that way. I mean, realistically, you'd be looking at maybe three items for fix. The next one does tend to be an infinity edge for him. He's got the BF sword there already. But how far away that actually is with gold as well. In that window of time, Gambit, they can take this Drake. They can just go back over to the Baron, and that's more kills, more picks. Perhaps the objective secured as well. And with the Baron, that should be enough for Gambit to just win the game. However, they still need to secure that one. And KLG are fighting constantly to get vision there. And ready to put it all on Tier Wolf's shoulders to potentially steal that one away to deny it as the jungler. And Edward gets that too. That. But Rusty, at what point is it too much? At what you know? point is this man crushing someone's dreams to the point where it's just not okay? You know, he comes in, he denies every engage, he takes away even the little things, the scuttle crabs, you know, the little pieces of joy in Tier Wolf's life right now. It hurts to be a jungler when your raptors are gone. Well, imagine a support taking away your scuttle crap. That's just insulting. Edward on the pulse. <laughs> it's a grim. Of course, going up against Edward, always going to be difficult. Star started the lineup once again for the Gambit side. And KLG, we'll have to see how they can recover here. If they can keep up that mental fortitude. But they may just have to count their first game as a loss, depending on how the next few minutes play out. But they're in a good enough position. Gambit still are not comfortable going and trying to no. force this Baron. So the game doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. They do seem to choose to play these slowly. They want the late game team fights. They've got the gold lead. And, you know, they've accelerated the game in its entirety. And it's just about getting that last major pick, that significant thing that does tip it in their favor. And they haven't even looked at starting the Baron. They haven't even been in the pit baiting it at all. They're pushing past that. They're going into the jungle, the red side where they are now, looking for those picks. And we're just kind of playing with this food here. Maybe they're going to look for the engage. Immediately they're going to find the fall. Galio off to come out as well. They want to take down that jungler, but instead they're going to have to settle for the support. It's loaded. It's not a killing spree. Immediately the fall to flash forward. No hesitation. Edward wants to keep this one going. It's going to take a lot of damage on the crit. Has to leap out to safety, but two quick kills in the favor of Gambit. Of anyone to be low right now, Edward is the member that is okay. They've got the Ocean Drake as well, and they've got PvP Stay are split pushing on the bottom side of the map on that gangplank. He's broken a turret. He's looking for more. And still, Gambit, do not look for the Baron. They want kills. And it's just, Rusty, it's terrifying, man. You lose the early game as KLG, the spot where you're supposed to win. Now you're in the late game. You're in Gambit's home turf, and we can see why. Now Nate trying to turn something oh, back no. in their favor. Zdeo's going to fumble the flash, but the TP is now being used. Galio on the way, and that is one very strong gangplank. But here's Tearwolf. Maybe they can take him down. Zdeo's still hungry for the kill. Gets the Sterex, wants one more barrel. Isn't going to get it. KLG getting something back, but that's the Baron you were waiting for, Rusty. In the meantime, it just drops. Everybody shows up bottom lane this time. The gangplank starting to run away with the game by his lonesome in the bottom lane. Teleport's just there to wave and watch as he does pass away, but his Baron's secured for his team. They are set. We said it takes the Baron perhaps to just win this one for Gambit in its entirety. Well, now they've got it, and the cost was actually quite small. Gonna have to see, and this is the issue when you fall so far behind, you have to commit so many members just to take down one, but Kira is gonna get that flash out. That's the mind game you were talking about earlier, Rusty. Is he gonna commit the flash? Plugo not gonna take the chance, makes it out to safety, and Gambit, the ball is in their court. It's been in their court for so long, and now it's time to see if they can close it out. Of course, they go back towards the Baron here. We watch Steos on the opposite side. He is the distraction throughout all of this. They're doing the Baron as we speak. The Flash was a mistake, but it wasn't a bad mistake in the end because he's just 1v1ing the side and Tearwolf was trying to predict him. So he's actually okay here. He buys a lot of time. Could have been so much worse. I mean, we take those, let's be honest. If you're going to fail Flash to accidentally save your own life for about another 10, 15 seconds... Make it worse. Is it still a fail Flash? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, fine. <laughs>
You gotta look for the little victories, you know? You gotta look for the little scuttle crabs you can take away from the support. Happy little accident. There you go. Gambit doing what they can to protect here. Of course, Trun just so far ahead at three items. Two of them so supportive. But Sion just gonna knock that creep back. Diamond Prox will get locked up, but Edward goes in with the Battle Dance, ready to use that grand entrance to get the fight started. And that was actually super well done by Kaoji, getting rid of a Banner of Command minion as well, preventing it from actually getting hits onto that turret to kill it. But the next wave is about to crash, and there's still going to be constant lingering concerns of Steos in the side lanes. But he doesn't have Baron. So as the split push goes, it is still difficult for him to navigate. However, when he draws pressure, like you're seeing right now, of multiple members, it's very easy to go on the opposite side. And you have to think it's hard to commit too many members to him because you can see even Tear Wolf with some tanky stats under his belt. But immediately the engage comes out. Gambit already for a fight. Loaded throws out the all pulls it right back. Does not need it to peel. He is happy just to dish out the damage. Kira now taking down slow. Nate to follow. The zombie scion gonna be absolutely worthless in this exchange. Just buying a bit of time. But it is the eulogy for KLG in their first game on the back of that fight. Oh, get the kill and a fix to round it out as well. They've still got the minions here, and it does look like Gambit want to continue to push forwards. Tear Wolf may not have what it takes to stop this Nexus from falling. One man is simply not enough, Rusty. Gambit denying everything KLG threw with them, turning it back in their favor as they look to pick up their first win here at the MSI play in stage. Tear Wolf, one last desperate stand. KDA going to get taken down. Just another notch as Gambit take their first win. And it does feel clean from Gambit. As victories go, you'd be very happy with the outcome of that one, how they were able to navigate the game, get themselves the victory. Only 30 minutes in, pretty quick game from them as well. Slow, methodical, but very successful. And the thing is, we saw every part of Gambit's playstyle showcase there with some new additions. We saw the creative early game play, the creative pathing from Diamond Prox. We saw their turnarounds, which were so key in bringing them home the victory in their own region. And we also saw something new. We saw them playing around the bottom side, setting up the bottom side. It was not about top lane and mid lane that game. It was all about the AD carry support duo. And I think there is a strategy to be spoken towards here when playing against the Chaos Lightning game as the Gambit seemed to have wanted to display here as well. And that is to focus the bottom lane, taking away the Rakan specifically as well. That's the place that you'd have to be looking at. I think that was the smart choice that opened up their bottom lane to be aggressive, to go forwards, to make big plays. And that they did. You just gotta wonder, teams watching this, if they're gonna they're gonna consider taking this Rakan away from Edward. Because even I feel like even without the Zaya, it still would have been a terrifying pick. The amount of times that he lived, the amount of times that he actually got away from what looked like guaranteed death, and then maybe turned it around with another engage was was quite impressive. Yeah, Edward was super clutch in that game, and he had to be. He had the team working around him, though you have to remember, how did this actually all start? Well, a level two blue buff, Trundle Cheese. <laughs> I think kinda. that's the definitive <laughs> I'm gonna play around bot lane is when you show up to bot lane at the same time yeah. as your bot lane, essentially try lane for the first 30 seconds. Yep, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty big part of it. I will say that that set things up very nicely for them. Against KLG, you get an early lead, you tend to win the game, and that is one of the unique ways that you'll see from a side like Gambit to do. And I wanna see if there's adaptation because we saw in KLG's regular season, they lost every game to Rebirth. But who do they beat in the final to get here? Rebirth. They've shown that they can grow, that they can conquer yeah. these kind of weaknesses and overcome opponents. Can they do the same for their next opponent? Can they do the same for the next time that they play Gambit? That's what I want to see. I think what's curious to me is we didn't actually see the full hand revealed of KLG. We definitely know that they are a Gangplank main in the top lane. It was banned from him in all five games of their five-game final against Rebirth. That's how good he is but they didn't pick it. They didn't take it. They took the Scion instead. They put yeah. Nate on those tank picks where he had been falling behind for so much. Now, admittedly, he went pretty even in the laning phase, but mm -hmm. going even against Kleptomancy isn't... You don't it's really go even against even. going yeah. even, right? He's always going to have that gold lead over you, and we know that he's going to have the scaling. It just felt like they were too split up. When Scion finally came into the fold and was, like, being a part of these engages, well, someone had to be catching farm on the side. Yeah. It was a little difficult. I mean, I think even fundamentally, though, they tried to take things away from Gambit just as much as Gambit did from them. And that's where we ended up with this weird crossroads and this jumbling of champions in the draft. And it's not that the comps were bad. It's that the comps weren't the styles of the teams that were playing them to the highest order. We just saw far more success because Edward can engage. Edward can play Rakan. And not just Edward, but Diamond as well. I love what he brought to the table in the early game. Let's take a look at a replay brought to you by Acer Predator, just showing off how dominant this player is. He's a super clutch player with plays like this, things that you don't expect. You know, you come to an international stage and this is the kind of things that he can make happen. Started off strong, started off early, and of course working around his team after. And this one, admittedly, feels a lot more like Edward and Lodic together, but it shows you 
how influential one Trundle Pillar can be and how <laughs> confident Diamond Proc is when he pillars Leona says, you know what, you guys can have that one. I'm going to go over to this other kill and grab that one instead. They have the Works Galio as well, to be fair. This big circle of like, everyone's dead there, so I'm just going to go hunt kills on the backside. You'll be fine, right? And I think Galio, not a pick that uh, personally I expected to see. You know, we heard from the desk, uh, LeBlanc, Ari, all these exciting like assassins potentially That's coming true. to the meta. And kind of the exact opposite of that in the Galio showing his face up against the Karma that I thought was, was kind of create a pick. Yeah, we do know that Kira's got a champion ocean, however, when it comes to the champions he can play. So. All right. Well, yeah, absolutely can. Well, after the break, White Lotus makes his return to the international stage as he and Rainbow Seven look to pick up their first win against Ascension Gaming. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. May well be down here. Trundle Talks in. Down creative passing. No chance to escape. The chain CC is coming in. Prime and Prox right there. First blood for Gambit. But that's not good news. There comes the Jane Clank all. Now they're trying to back it out. The damage comes in slow, they're going to be in a tough Dying spot here. In. They're ready to turn it, they're just leaving him to die. In comes Kira, he's going to get one. Locked down, out comes the ultimate from... Oh, find it, Zion is going to go forward, looking for the chain CC. Lodok has to use the ult, no more defensive tools used, and he gets taken down in the end. Just going to play on the here, maybe going to look for the engage. Immediately they're going to find a fall. Galio ult to come out as well, they want to take down that jungler, but instead they're going to have to settle for the support. As Lodok's on a killing spree, immediately the fall to flash forward, no hesitation. But immediately the engage comes out, Gambit already for a fight. Lodok throws out the ult, pulls it right back, does not need it to peel. He is happy just to dish out the damage. Through with them, turning it back in their favor as they look to pick up their first win here at the MSI play in stage. Tier Wolf, one last Last desperate stand, KDA gonna get taken down. Just another notch as Gambit take their first win.